Nabalitaan mo na ba ang mga myths at misconceptions about COVID-19 vaccine? Well, alamin natin yan with me right now. One year na po tayo sa COVID-19 vaccine and in this span of time, may mga vaccines na po tayong na-develop na nade-deploy na ngayon sa iba't ibang countries at nabigay na sa mga first uh, priority groups at ang mga vaccines na to were given emergency use authorizations. Ang emergency use authorization ay isang authorization na nag-grant ng FDA sa mga unregistered or underdeveloped drugs. So, itong mga to ay nabigyan ng authorization to a risk-based assessment. Siyempre, chinek ng FDA yan at chinek niya kung efe- effective, efficient, at talagang makakatulong sa pag-fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. So, nung nakita nila na maganda yung results, even though hindi pa nila nakukuha yung lahat ng evidences, they've given it emergency use. So, ginawa ito ng FDA para maibigay sa mga taong affected ng public health emergency, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Amidst the vaccine deployment at sa amidst the vaccination programs na nangyayari around the world, marami pa ding skeptic at syempre maraming rumors, myths, and misconceptions na nag-aabound. And today, going to explain bakit yung mga claims na yun are all myths and misconceptions. Okay, so let's start with the most controversial and pinakasikat sa lahat kasi nakikita mo siya sa Facebook, makikita mo siya sa Twitter, makikita mo siya sa lahat ng social media. At yun ay, number one, COVID-19 RNA vaccines can alter your DNA. Okay, so, itong claim na to is hindi talaga siya tama. You know why? Because yung mRNA vaccines na dinevelop, which is Pfizer and Moderna, although RNA sila, They don't have the capability to change or to enter the nucleus of a cell. So, bakit? Saan ba? Ano bang meron kasi sa vaccine na to? So, para mas maintindihan natin, let's, ex- uh, let's discuss the mechanism of action ng Pfizer and Moderna. Okay, so ang vaccines na to, they are employing um, mRNA. So, ano itong mRNA? So, ito ay isang set of instructions na naglalaman nung protein sequences ng spike protein ng SARS-CoV-2. Now, bakit sa lahat-lahat ng information, bakit protein sequence ito ng spike proteins ng SARS-CoV-2? Well, kung babalik tayo sa mechanism ng infection, malilipat or mahahawa ng isang taong positive sa COVID-19 ang isang tao through respiratory droplets. Now, yung droplets na yon naglalaman ng COVID-19 virus. Yung COVID-19 virus, wala siyang kapabiliting mabuhay outside of the cell. Okay? Para siyang parasite. Kailangan niya ng cell. So, yung virus na yon para makapasok siya sa cell at maka- mag-establish siya ng infection, kailangan niya ng spike protein para makadikit or makalapit doon sa cell na yon. So, kung walang spike protein, hindi makakapasok ang virus sa loob ng cell. Kung hindi makapasok, walang infection. Tama? So, kaya naman sa lahat-lahat yung mRNA uh, na vaccine na yun, yung laman nun is set of instructions containing the spike protein. Anong mangyayari kapag ka nakapasok yung mRNA vaccine na yun sa katawan ko? Well, ang gagawin niya is pupunta siya doon sa immune cells and then yung immune cells, pipick up niya yung mRNA. Okay? And then yung mRNA vaccines na yun, mapupunta siya sa cytoplasm. Kumbaga sa, sa itlog, kung nakakita kayo ng sunny side up egg, yung nucleus or yung DNA, kung saan nandun yung DNA, yung gitna, yung yellow. Yung cytoplasm, siya yung white part. Okay? Bakit kailangan pumunta doon yung mRNA vaccine? Dahil doon sa white part or cytoplasm ng cell, nandoon yung protein factories. Okay? Or yung ribosomes. At doon, pag nakapasok ang mRNA vaccine, i-instruct niya ang mga protein factories doon na, uy, gumawa kayo ng copies ng spike protein. So, gagawa sila ng copies ng spike protein. Pagka nagawa yun, yung immune cell na yun, marirecognize niya na, uy, hindi to 
part ng katawan ko. So, i- ipo-flag niya yan, itataas niya, kumbaga, i-raise niya yan sa labas. Uy, hey guys, meron akong spike protein. Itong spike protein na to, hindi to atin. Ganon. So, ilalabas niya yan doon sa cell, sa, sa, ko, ano niya. Ngayon, itong katawan natin, very efficient to. Ayaw niya ng mga foreign things sa loob ng katawan. So, marirecognize yun ng katawan, yung spike protein na yun. Okay? And then, Pag na-recognize yun ang katawan, uy, iba to ah, bago to ah. So, ang gagawin is, magpuproduce siya ng antibodies against the spike protein. So, ano naman ang mangyayari kapag ka nag-produce na ako ng antibodies against spike protein? Kapag dumating yung totoong COVID-19 virus at ikaw ay na-expose, and then, since na-expose ka na sa vaccine, alam na ngayon ng katawan mo, uy, wait, spike protein to ah. hindi ito part ng katawan ko, aatakihin niya yung spike protein. So, hindi malilipat yung virus sa cell at hindi siya magtitake over. Walang infection na mangyayari. So, yun yung mechanism of action ng Pfizer at Moderna. In other words, ikaw, yung katawan mo, yung naging factory ng antibodies. Kaya siya mabilis na nagawa. Hindi siya katulad ng mga traditional vaccines na kailangan nating i-culture, i-weekend, after i-weekend, saka natin i-purify and then saka na i-inject sa tao. Ganun eh, sobrang tagal kasi kailangan viruses, they are very delicate. Kailangan mo ng clone cells na dun siya mag-grow, after mo mag-grow, dun mo siya papahinain, after mo pahinain, i-purify. Maraming process. By that time, siguro, ang dami nang na-infect Na, na mga tao. Okay? So, kaya mabilis ang Pfizer at Moderna. Kasi yung katawan na mismo, yung naging antibody factory. Okay? So, hindi siya pupunta sa nucleus ng cell. Kasi after niyang mabigay yung instructions, mRNA would break down. Mawala na yun siya at ma-eliminate sa katawan. Hindi yun siya mag-stay forever doon. Okay? Second claim. COVID-19 vaccines are one way of inserting microchips and other tracking device sa katawan. <laughs> Let's just uh, be very clear, no? Vaccines are in no way, hindi sila pwedeng maging microchips and tracking device because those things, um, they don't confer immunity. Hindi yun sila magbibigay ng immunity sa katawan dahil syempre, tracking device yung mga yun, microchips yung mga yun. Eh, wala, hindi ka nila mapoprotektahan sa COVID-19 disease. So, why would a person or a country invest on something that would... Alam mo yun, people are dying. Everyday, maraming na-infect with COVID-19 disease. And... The main goal of every health organization and every country is to decrease the cases so that babalik tayo sa normals or the new normal and then the economy of the country would not perish kasi affected lahat. So tracking and microchips are the last thing a country would think about right now. Ang pinaka goal is to get all those vaccines deployed and um, given to the priority groups and make sure that the cases are dropping. It's not true. So, wag na po nating sisihin si Bill Gates. Kawawa naman po si na Bill Gates. Bakit? Kasi, did you know, Bill Gates donated a lot of money just so that those vaccines will be developed instead of uh, spreading rumors and fake news about Bill Gates and their foundation. Let's be grateful and thankful na may mga philanthropists na willing mag-fund ng mga vaccine developments in order to speed up the process of manufacturing and um, development. Okay? Number three. COVID-19 vaccine can cause female sterilization. So, this uh, claim uh, stemmed from the idea kasi na yung spike protein daw ng coronavirus has uh, some same sequences with the human protein Sincithin 1. Okay, so spike proteins, like I said, yung proteins, meron niyang protein sequences. At yung sequences na yun, yun yung parang fingerprint or identity ng isang virus or isang bacteria or cell. Okay, so sabi nila, may five sequences daw na nagmatch with spike protein of SARS-CoV-2 virus at human protein Sincithin 1. Ano ba yung Sincithin 1 na yan? 
Ang sincitin 1 kasi is a human protein found in placentas. So, sila yung responsible sa cell-to-cell -cell fusion kapag ka na-develop yung baby. Siyempre, yung baby kailangan niya mag-implant sa uterus. Tama? So, doon ma-develop din yung placenta. So, ang worry nila is kapag ka parehas daw ang spike proteins ng SARS-CoV-2 or ng COVID-19 virus at ng sincitin 1 kapag na-inject ang isang female or na-vaccinate ang isang female, yung antibodies against SARS-CoV-2 or antibodies against spike proteins will also attack the proteins of sincitin 1. Okay? So, kasi ang antibodies, ano yan siya, lock and key model. So, may mga cases na pwede mag-cross-react. Mga ganun. May mga cases like sa autoimmune. Magkaparehas sila ng sequence dahil parehas na lito yung antibody akala niya Cell A is the same as cell B. So, akala niya, instead ng atakihin niya lang ay cell A, inatake din niya yung cell B kasi pareha sila ng sequence. Now, dahil daw magkaparehas ng protein sequence ang SARS-CoV-2 virus at ang sincitin 1, pwede daw mag-cross-react yung antibodies na, nag na, na nagawa through vaccines. At, Atakihin yung placenta. Pag naatake yung placenta, kawawa si baby, hindi na pwedeng mga si mami. Now, totoo ba yun? Hindi po. Hindi yun totoo. Yung sequences na sinasabi na, na post or na claim sa Twitter is sobrang konte. It's just five sequences na nagmatch. In order for cross-reactivity to happen, it needs at least eight to ten match sequences. E5 lang yung match sequences ng sincitin 1 at SARS-CoV-2 virus or COVID-19 virus. Now, yung 5 matching sequences ng spike protein ng SARS-CoV-2, sobrang short niya na yung mga ganong sequence, you can also find those matching sequences sa human proteins na collagen at hemoglobin. Now, with that very short sequence match, dapat yung mga participants ng COVID-19 vaccines, syempre kasi diba na, na bigyan sila ng vaccine. Yung vaccine na yun against spike protein 2, tama? And then sinasabi nila yung spike protein 2, kaparehas ng sincitin 1. E eh, apart sa sincitin 1, kaparehas din ng, ng ibang portions ng SARS-CoV-2 yung collagen at yung hemoglobin. So yung mga nag-participate dapat sa vaccine clinical studies, dapat nagkaroon sila ng uh, autoimmune or adverse reactions against antibody, dun sa mga antibodies na na-form against their hemoglobin or against their collagen. Pero wala naging ganun. Ibig sabihin, those sequences are very short to elicit cross-reactivity. Okay? And, tandaan natin, SARS-CoV-2 or yung COVID-19 virus, kapamilya niya ang coronaviruses. Tama? Kaya nga siya SARS-CoV-2, coronav. Now, itong coronavirus family, ito ay pamilya ng mga common colds, virus na nagkakos ng sipon, common colds tuwing winter. So, they share similar matching or sequences with sincitin 1 as well. Kasi magkapares eh, coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 is under the family of coronaviruses. And since SARS-CoV-2 share short, very short matching sequences against sincitin 1, Siyempre, yung mga common colds natin, they also share short sequences against sincitin 1. Pero, kung totoo nga na yung very short sequences na yun ay nagkakos ng cross-reactivity, bakit yung mga female pregnant mummies natin na nagkasipo, nagkaubo during the winter, they, they are still able to give birth to babies. Diba? Also, kung totoo talaga yun, then there should be a peak of infertility during winter. Kasi winter times, nagtatribe yung mga coronaviruses na yan. E wala namang nabalita na nagpipik ang infertility during winter. In fact, did you know na during the bare months, yun dun pa mas maraming nabubuntis. So there's no such thing as SARS-CoV-2 being able to have share cross-reactivities against sensitive one. So guys, mummies, fi ang mga females na niniwala dyan sa claims na yan, mga girls, please get yourself vaccinated. Kasi mas matindi ang side effects ng COVID-19, even if it's mild or asymptomatic, you can get 
long holders or long COVID. If you haven't known about that, click on this video so you could know the long term or the long term consequences or complications of COVID-19. Kahit na you've been, uh, you've survived, and the virus is now eliminated in your body. So get yourself vaccinated, girls. So if you find this video helpful, don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share with someone who needs to know about it. I'll see you next week on another video about coronavirus disease. I'm Dalsimer Vicente, providing you med remedy.